Praise God. Let's go. Amen. What's up, brothers and sisters? Can y'all hear me? Well, I can almost read this without the double glasses. Tony Stewart in the house. Praise God. You guys can hear me? Okay, cool. Amen, amen. Let's go. This is it. You know, double glasses is better. <laughs> Why mess around when you got double glasses? Amen, y'all. Amen. Praise God. Hi from Kansas. What's up, Kansas? Amen, you guys. Canada in the house. Shalom, shalom. Not much running on fumes, but still going. We're going to finish this thing to the end if it kills us. How long am I running tonight? I don't know. I got one comment that said, man, three hours is too long. I can't watch it. But I got a million comments where people are just re-watching it, re-watching it, and doing that kind of stuff. So, Repo Man 64, okay, teach me stuff. Amen. You're going to learn tonight. Let's go. Listen, this is it. I'm telling you, this is it. it. It can't be anything else. How can it be anything else when you look at the fig tree? And and I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I want to let people get in first, but the, the fig tree had to start sometime, right? Had to start. You, you can't just say, oh, well, we don't know. That That's the biggest thing we got is the fig tree. I didn't go anywhere. I got, listen, all, the people that remember me from TikTok, I got permanently banned off there. Can't even watch a TikTok video on my phone. So if I would have went and got a new phone number and did all that, I could have tried to get back to TikTok, but I didn't want to. Once TikTok was over for me, it, it felt like uh, a blessing. So then I went to Clapper because, you know, I got a, a group that's been with me for a year and a half, you know, my study group family that came over from TikTok. And listen, th this YouTube thing, this is of the Lord. Because people told me, go on YouTube, go on YouTube. I never wanted to go on YouTube. I just never felt led. And then all of a sudden, I was like, man, I should make a YouTube video. Just, I never said it in a year and a half. So here we are at the end got to be a purpose for it in God's perfect plan, and I'll just trust it. Praise God. All glory to the Father. Yeah, a lot of people need to open their eyes. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's been a while for me. I mean, look, I, I can still watch TikTok videos because they make it to YouTube and on Clapper, the family that we got there, they, they can post TikTok videos. So I, I see enough of it. But I ain't worried about it. We're going to have a glorified body. We're going to be one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to pop up to 10 dimensions and all our troubles will be a distant memory. So, yeah, so the YouTube thing worked out. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy, but it did. Amen, amen, sister, praise God. Yeah, I tried to do the captions. I, I, I couldn't pull that off last time. I, I hit it on there, and it was, uh, it was grayed out, and... It, it wouldn't let me do it. So I am completely illiterate when it comes to technology. That's a fact. And I just, I, I don't know how to do anything.
But look, Clapper is just an app like TikTok. So I got the same name on Clapper. So you, you can find me easy over there. It's the cool cat with the K and the numbers, all that. Amen. Praise God. I mean, it did work out that it's it's crazy. I just I I never felt led to do you know YouTube, which I wish I would have did it from the start. I guess, but is it four point four four? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Well, I try I try to do the captions on the one video. So. Anyway, you got to do the captions after you're done when you post the video. I don't even know. No, we don't, but we're about to find out. Oh, yeah, listen, I'm I'm going to do the the parable of the 10 virgins. Listen, we we don't have to keep our oil full. You, you guys got to know that. What's up, brother Tom? If, if That means we're keeping our salvation. Just think about that with me. If we don't have enough oil or, or how do we keep our oil, that I'm telling you, it's for the tribulation. The 10 virgins are 10 nations. Virgin means unmarried daughter. They don't have an affiliation with, with a God. So that's why they're virgins. The Jews already married to God. Us, we're married to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not virgins in that respect. We're a, we're a chaste virgin to be married, okay? But they're waiting for the feast. Every time you see wedding or marriage in that parable, it it's the same Greek word. It means wedding feast. So if you piped in feast for there, it would all make sense. Every time you see wedding or marriage, just just think marriage feast. You know, listen, we're, we're the called out ones. The church is called by the father. The father handpicked the bride for the son. So they're not gonna lose anybody, right? Right, all 10 fell asleep and listen, I put a connection. I, I wish I could do this video. There's a lot to it. But look at the wheat and the tares. We're not the wheat and the tares. We've been taught our whole life that, oh, we're the wheat, the devil sows the tares, and that's the church. Okay? But that's not the case. So... I, I think it works, sister. So listen, the wheat and the tares, believe it or not, is for the tribulation. We couldn't even possibly believe that, but it's all culminating to that. And it says, while they fell asleep. So Mike, Brother Repo Man just brought that up. So the virgins fall asleep and the wheat fell asleep. And when they fell asleep, the tares were sown. But Jesus said, the field is the world, not the church. Not the church. What's up, Brother Steve? So anyway, it, it's it's crazy. Everything God has done, he has put all the emphasis on that seven-year period. So uh, again, I wanted to say this last time, but I don't know if I did or not. I can't remember anything. But seven years is a good chunk of change. Seven years... If you think about it, if I said to you right now, okay, my next live will be in seven years. That's a long time. Look, look at all that can happen in seven years. So we view it as nothing compared to 6,000 years of God's human history. But seven years in and of itself is a long time. So God culminated it all to the seven years. So the wheat and the tares is seven years. Virgins is the seven years. Think about this. Why did God split it up like this? Everybody thinks the one taken and the one left is the rapture. It's not the rapture. It's the second coming. So it's like a 50% rule. Wheat, tares, wise, foolish, sheep, goat, one taken, one left. 
Do you see that pattern? One taken, one left, sheep, goat, wheat, tares, wise, foolish. That's not how the church goes. Church, church isn't uh, 50%, you know, 50% of the, of the thing. <laughs> There's, there's my boy Bandit Trucker. <laughs> I've seen him in my comment section. He's been railing against me. <laughs> God bless him. He just, listen, people don't want to learn or at least look. Listen, you, you can prove me wrong with the Bible on anything I say, and I will listen. So I'll listen, and if you can show me out of the Bible where I'm wrong, which has been done plenty of times in my Christian walk, then I'm all ears, but you can't just spew yeah. you're wrong for no reason or whatever. That that doesn't even make sense. All right, Brother Nixon here. Is Brother Steven here? Do I got to get a couple more moderators or what do I got? Two in here? Jack Burton. Love that name. Yeah, you know what? I got to really think about Revelation 18.23. That's a big verse. That's a big verse. There, Steve. I, I just added you, brother. All right, let me let love not in. Just let him out. Thought I was good. All right, come on. Let's go. guys want to make the rapture, you better keep oil in your vessels. The oil only counts for the animals. What's up? What's up? Last call. Amen, brother. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll throw you on there, Mike, if I need you. We'll see how it goes, but you can relax. Second Samuel 20, yeah, I'd have to look that up. But look, that Revelation 18, 23 is a big verse. Yeah, and, and I've heard that definition and I, I agree with that part of it. The whole sorceries, the vax, all that stuff, the mark eventually, but there's more in that verse too. Listen, I had I had a, a revelation to me today. You guys may have already known this, but listen, when the Jews win the Psalm 83 war, they're going to expand their borders. That's why that war is first. Ezekiel 38 war, it says they'll come up against them that has unwalled villages. That's a huge verse for the Ezekiel 38 war unwalled villages. Everything Israel has now is all walled up. So they expand their borders because the Psalm 83 war is all the surrounding nations. They win. Now, after, amen, what's up, brother Greg? So after the Ezekiel 38 war, think about it. America's already out of the picture. Russia gets depleted there. Iran, all the enemies. So this this dawned on me before that Israel will basically be the number one of the world. They could be very, very well be the number one superpower. The revived Roman Empire, which Antichrist will be operating out of, probably for the first half, it'll shift over to Jerusalem. That's why it's the Great Tribulation. The first half, listen, there's only 16 million Jews in the world. God's going to protect them. So while the four horsemen are killing the rest of the world and you know people are killing each other, Revelation 6, 4, all that's going on, the two wars will decimate nations and then Israel is gonna be rocking and rolling. Then Antichrist comes over, he stops the oblations, stops the sacrifices and says, I'm God, worship me. And then two thirds of the Jews, according to Zechariah 13, will worship him. And that's when God hammers Israel. So if you think about it, 
the first half, this is why people get confused. So I'm truly, this just dawned on me that the world has tribulation. We read it in Revelation 6, but the Jews don't have tribulation until the second half. And God is furious that they will worship Antichrist as God, pay tithes to him. That was the whole Saul connection. So it's really the second half will kind of be regional, regional, you know, on the Middle East coming down hard because the rest of the world will already be decimated. 40% of the planet's already on fire. Yeah, the weapons for seven years once the war is finished. Right, so it'll be chaos at the end, the Battle of Armageddon, all that stuff. But look, it never really just clicked in. Like the Jews are protected the first half. All of them, all of them are. Because they got a temple and they're rolling. They're doing sacrifices. And God's, this is why you, you read all those verses that says, God says, I hate your feast days. I hate them. I, I'm not gonna drink the blood of bulls. We read that last time. Because they don't know why they're doing it. It makes, they're, they're not even thinking. And again, that was my analogy of when we listen to a song and then all of a sudden it dawns on us what they're singing about. Oh, that's what it means. And we had it memorized for years and we just weren't thinking. We sing along, we do it, and then boom. So the Jews aren't thinking of why they're sacrificing animals. They're just going through the motions. And that's why they'll take on Antichrist as their God, and God's going to judge them hardcore. Listen, Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, he said, run, run. Don't go down in the house. Don't go back into the city. Do nothing but run. So I think the people that escape, that heed that warning, they're going to be added to the remnant that's already in place. I haven't fully wrap my brain around the remnant because the remnant seems like it gets added to. And look, they're protected for three and a half years. So that makes sense. They're all protected in the, in the first three and a half. That's why they're protected on the second three and a half. Like supernaturally protected by the Lord. Oh man, this is, I can't wait to know all this stuff. Amen, Manuel. God bless you. Amen, amen. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if they if they had the mark, but that could be a reference because in in the lingo it's go buy from those who sell. Can't buy or sell without the mark. So it could be. It could be. But look, you got categories of people that you gotta you gotta split up. The the wheat and the tares are different than the sheep and the goat, and you know maybe different than the wise and the foolish virgins. So it, it's just it, it's so interesting to you know separate all these if we can, if if it's possible that we can do it now. So I didn't see what you said there, brother Mike. Oh, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 to the 14 years. Hmm. You don't you don't mean like a Oh, is that that's when Paul said, I knew a man 14 years ago. Yeah, so I think I don't know if that's any typology in there. I knew a man above Christ 14 years ago. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. It's in the same verse, though, that he was caught up to the third heaven. That's interesting. Hey, what's up, brother? God bless you. Beyond the firmament. Amen. Yeah, lukewarm. They're not going to be raptured. And listen, people, look, at, I do what I do, and I don't feel convicted when I tell people they're not saved. Because here's the thing. If they really are saved, then what's the difference? They're still making it. That nothing happens to a saved person if I say, hey, I don't think you're saved. But if they're not saved, then they can say, uh, 
you know, maybe they got to think a little. Am I saved? This dude says I'm not saved because I'm foaming at the mouth and saying it's a post-trib rapture. Well, maybe they think and figure it out that maybe they weren't saved. So, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, a couple of times I felt convicted, but not that much. And, and look, I'm, I'm aware of it. I pray about it. I'm, you know, thinking about what I say to people. You know, that nobody knows the day or the hour, people. I mean, they're, they're relentless. They, they don't ever say another word. They, they never say anything else. Just nobody knows the day or the hour. Jesus doesn't know. How do you know? No, 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 no. And then you send them scriptures and they don't want to know nothing. Mm, I think Luke 21, 34 through 36 is for us, honestly because that's all in the context of Luke 21, 28. When you see these things, look up, your redemption draws nigh. So I, I think that's definitely for us. Listen, our family, the whole world, they all think we're nuts. It's just as simple as that. But listen, the whole salvation thing, somebody is the lukewarm church. Somebody's the lukewarm church. We're living in the lukewarm era. So basically, the whole church is lukewarm, except for people like us, the remnant. I'm, I'm drinking Arnold Palmer tea. So, you know, everybody wants to say, ah, it's not a salvation issue. It's not a salvation issue. Man, when I did the lukewarm church, Revelation 3, 14 through whatever it is, 22, Jesus said, because you say, because you say, I'm rich, I'm increased with goods, I have need of nothing. Doesn't that sound exactly like it's not a salvation issue? I don't, I don't need your eschatology. I don't need this. I don't need that. I'm saved no matter what. You can't tell me I'm not saved. That's what they're saying. I'm in need of nothing. Listen, how can you be living today, right now, with all that you know about the Bible and the world and not be interested in the return of the Lord? How, how is that possible? How is that possible? To me, that's insanity. I, I'm telling you, to me, that's a red flag. And listen, again, people can still be saved. I don't know who's saved or not, but I feel like my job is to tell them, I don't think you're saved if I believe that. I don't just say that willy-nilly. If I get into a conversation with somebody and they start spewing out real gibberish, then I just, you know, I, I think, man, I don't know. You probably aren't saved because again, Somebody has to be lukewarm. I mean, this this is the church now. Praise God, brother, you didn't miss nothing. The carnal quote, what was that? Man, I can't stop this. The, the carnal Christian, like 1 Corinthians 3. And, and listen, there's, there's another verse that I got to fully study out. Amen, sister. Amen. Amos. Look at 2 Timothy 2.15. Rightly divide the word of truth. Be a worker who's not ashamed before God. So if somebody's fully studied that out, you can tell me right now, that could be you're still saved, but you're completely ashamed because you didn't rightly divide the word. Or you're ashamed as in you didn't make it. So I haven't studied that out yet because I'd have to look at all the Greek words and see what God's saying there. So if that's the case, then all glory to God, more people than I think will be saved because I, I don't think many people are truly saved. Just listen, all the churches I went to in my life, I, I counted them up one time. It was well over 50. I don't even, I go in there, there's nobody interested. There's nobody interested in the word of God. You try to you try to bring up a a subject like, hey, I was learning about New Testament tithing, and you know, we're just supposed to kind of freely give as God has blessed us. Whatever. Speaking in tongues, you know, 
uh, all this stuff, whatever the subject, nobody was interested. There'd be like one or two people that even wanted to talk about the Word of God. So I learned this quickly. And look, they used to say to me, when I first got saved, I, I was on fire, like knocking people over the head with the Bible in their face, not rude, not stupid, proper, just excited. And then I remember the elders of the churches I was at would say, oh, you'll grow out of that. You'll grow out of that. You're, you're just excited now because you just got saved. That's what they were saying to me. Like they were trying to wait for my fervor to die off. And, you know, and eventually it did because <laughs> the world beat me down. My own sin beat me down. And it's hard to stay on fire the whole time. So... God forgive us that we haven't, because that's the Ephes Ephesus church. You lost your first love. That first love is everything. So the fact that we got it back at the end, that means a lot. I love it. So praise God for that. That's all God. That is all God. Right. And, and what people will say to me, well, what church do you go to? I say, I don't have a church. I cannot even find a decent church. And then they look down at you because you don't go to church. <laughs> so, and those are the people I'm telling you that I think are the lukewarms. Can a homosexual truly be born again if they refuse to change their lifestyle? It's possible. A lot of people will tell you no. A lot of people will tell you no, but it is possible. Do you know why? Because Romans 9. God said to Moses, Paul quoted it and said, I'll have mercy on whomever I'll have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So ultimately, I don't know. We don't know. Listen, Solomon sacrificed babies to Molech at the end of his life. This is what Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, but I found both verses. I, I, I don't have them in the memory banks yet. It's first king somewhere, three, two, something like that. It says God loves Solomon and Solomon loved God. So praise God, Solomon had a rough ending to his life, but he made it. He, he was saved ultimately. So do you wanna live a sinful lifestyle and take a chance? You know, the, the general rule is maybe you're not saved. You're probably not saved. But is it possible for somebody to be saved? Absolutely. God can save the, the worst person that we know, you know, like Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer supposedly got saved right before they killed him in jail. Now, I don't know if his conversion was real. He said it was real. Other people believe it. They do the documentary on it. We don't know. I don't know. Stance on the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All the way. 100%. If you're a modalist or a Jesus-only person, I don't think you're saved. And that's an honest, honest belief that I have. Because that, that gets into territory where you're trying to separate the Father and the Son and going all down that. It's not a good road. The, the modalist road is no good. It, it's a silly doctrine. To be a modalist is silly. It's, ugh. It, if Satan tricks somebody into modalism, man, he tricked you with a, just a ridiculous doctrine. Just, just ridiculous. So, look, I, I, I've had my run-ins with them, ex-brothers, whatever you want to call them, that went full-blown modalism and... It's it's a dead end. A modalist is just Jesus is in different modes. So Jesus is the Father and he is the Son and he is the Spirit. So when Jesus was on earth praying to the Father, in essence, he was really just praying to himself. So a modalist just, you know, you know, they look at father as just a title and not a real thing, which is, uh, you know, it's no good. I'm, I'm telling you, it's no good.
prophets, self-professed prophets, all the TikTok prophets, the women in their bedrooms getting 17 visions a day, all gibberish, all bunk. Listen, can God give me a vision right now if he wanted to? Yeah, he could. But 1 Corinthians 13.10 says, when the perfect is come, that will cease. That means something. We have the perfect word of God. There's, there's no new visions. Listen, I told you my example last time. The girl in the comment section said to me, I had a dream about New York that missiles were coming to New York. You better move. So I would have to <laughs> pack up, sell my house, move. I mean, it's insane. So no, all of the, the modern day prophets, no. Well, because if you read 1 Corinthians 13, 10, put it this way, I'll ask you a question. Why would you ask for a vision when you have the full, complete word of God that's eternal and it'll last forever? Jesus said, my words will never pass away. Everything is in the word of God. So it's almost like, what are you looking for? A shortcut? Hey, God, give me a vision. Tell me the rapture date so I don't have to study and work out this enigma. You know, this beautiful riddle that God has given us. Beautiful riddle. Listen, this is the greatest, believe it or not, game ever. Our father proposed a riddle in Psalm 49, which is 1949. In my opinion, tongues are done away with too. If you were in the African jungle and dealing with pygmies and they got some language that you don't know and you're a missionary, then and God lets you speak their tongue so they can understand it, that's different. But the gibberish tongue that you see, Kenneth Copeland, I mean, think about it. Who speaks in tongues today? Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers, Benny Hinn, Jesse Duplantis, all those people. Do you want to be associated with those people? I mean, seriously, they're the ones speaking in tongues. Not the John MacArthur's, the Chuck Swindolls, the David Jeremiah's, the, you know, whoever else, the Chuck Missler type people, uh, Skip Heitzig, you know, they're not speaking in tongues. So it, it's, you know, you got to think a little bit. So, and look, I, I was saved ultimately in a charismatic church that right after I got saved, it went full blown crazy. So the pastor was great, I got saved, and then they kind of went off the deep end. So, yeah, the Pentecostal is, it's, it's no good. Amen, amen, night shift. <laughs> yeah, tongues is, I mean, what's the point of speaking in tongues nowadays? You got apps that translate every language. I mean, there's, there's no point. And then people will say, it's my private prayer language. No, it's not. I talk to God in English and he prompts me back through his word or, you know, a message spoken, taught. So... Listen, look at you. You speak in tongues and you're dropping the BS word. So what's that tell you? <laughs> I would say you're probably not saved. So it's all I can tell you. It's not, listen, it's not an old prayer language. The oldest prayer language, that doesn't even make sense. So again, everybody else in here, do you see what happens? It's gibberish. Do you see? So they're upset. He misidentified it as an old prayer language. No, it was real languages in the beginning of the church so the gospel could spread. Before the Bible was all put together, you, you went into other towns. What did they say in Acts 2? What did they say? They said, 
how do these guys know our language? That's what they said. They were hearing God be lifted up and God be praised and the gospel spoken in their language. So it there was a point to speaking in tongues, not just rabba sada gababa da gadababa. Hey, well, I wonder what I said there. Sounded great. You know, bless me, Lord. I mean, look at I can't. It's it's not there. If, if you want to keep speaking in tongues, then you, you do it, and we'll see how it it turns out. But I I don't think it's necessary. Amen. <laughs> well, missiles to New York. <laughs> Look, the destruction of America is coming, though. It is coming. And it's coming quick. I mean, it, God's done with America. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how many mods I got in here. I think we're doing all right. Yeah, I'm not messing with the Holy Spirit. I've been a Christian for thirty years. I've been in those churches. Again, just truly think with me. Who speaks in tongues that you know right now? It's the Kenneth Copelands, is it not? Who, who else is speaking in tongues? Just think about that. So that should be all you really need to know. I mean, man, just, just watch those guys. Anybody like them. All the charismatics. And listen, I would name other people, but I don't even know them. The whole, uh, I don't even, what's it called? The music thing that's no good. Bethel music, something else. Uh, all that stuff going on over there, those guys. So, I forgot what the other name of it. Yeah, Beth Hillsong. Yep, Hillsong. Thank you. So uh, all that movement, I mean, that's all, you know, I don't know a lot about those guys, but I know they're off. I've heard other people talk about them, and I, I don't watch it. So, but, you know, all, all the people that really get on TV, you, you got to wonder about it. Listen, what, what, what do you want? What do you want? I want the Bible. That's what I want. I want the Bible and God. Jesus saved me. He lives inside of me. That's all I need. That's all I've ever needed for 30 years. And God has blessed me, kept me alive, took care of me, even disciplined me when I went off into sin, brought me back, always let me know I was his, and I never needed anything else. The truth of the word of God is all I ever needed. And this book, <laughs> if we know 5% of this book, we'll be lucky. So all the riches in this book and what? I want a vision. I want a word of the Lord. Oh, give me some tongues, Lord. Give me this, give me that. Come on, no. I just, and look, we can agree to disagree on it, but we'll see in the end. And the end is coming. The end is coming. Well, look, quickly, the 10 virgins to me, virgin means unmarried daughter. They don't have an affiliation. So when they go into the tribulation, they do not have a God. So the oil is the word of God and belief in it. So the wise ones have light, they have the word, they have the belief in it. The foolish ones were messing around with the merchandisers those who buy, those who sell. So I don't know if they ultimately take the mark of the beast. That's a good question. But the, listen, there's gonna be 10 kings under the Antichrist. That's why it's 10 virgins. So it's not the Jews. They already married God in the Old Testament, Exodus 19. It's not us because Christ already purchased us. He bought us. We're his bride. We know now how a Jewish wedding works. We're already married, and then he went to prepare a place for us. So it's not us. 
it's going to be the world. The 10 regions that this world gets split up to. Remember, it's a different age. You have to believe the whole time. The whole time you have to believe. That's keeping the oil, keeping the word of God, you know, in you, belief. So I'll try to do it. I started to do it. I got halfway through, you know, the parable of the 10 virgins. And listen, I, I'm i begging God. I've forgotten stuff that God has given me. And it's sad. I, I, I kicked myself because I, I got, I don't even know. I got about 300 papers of notes for the last year and a half. But I got a voice recorder on my phone. I had like 30 messages where I talk into it. I get an idea or thought. I listened to them today and I remembered something or listened to it and then remembered, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So if I can pull that off, maybe on the next live, that'll be a cool one. It's about the judgment days. So just putting it all together from the word. So I'm, I'm praying that I can get that one done. But, but I forgot about that we learned this because we learned so much. And then if you don't keep talking about it, it's like new information. And then the next time you're talking about something different and you lose it. So. Look at only people that are getting booted if they get quirky. I, I don't care. Listen, you can disagree with me. No, Nobody's getting booted for dis disagreeing with me. That's. That's not why you get booted. You start swearing or saying crazy stuff, then I trust the moderators. They know what they're doing. Amen. There's the gospel, but don't forget about verse 2 of 1 Corinthians 15. Unless you believed in vain. It's right there. If you believed in vain, you did not get saved by that precious gospel. Right. Endure to the end is, that's tribulation talk. That's how they got to endure to the end. Amen. Praise God, Pia. Yeah, the po the post trib rapture is just it's ridiculous, and they're they're they really they really want to you know foaming at the mouth I call them post trib. There's no point in getting raptured at the end. No point. Look, the Bi the Bible is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Jesus and the word is one and the same. Two witnesses are going to be Moses and Elijah. Set some dates. Look, I'm looking at September 9th, 10th, and 11th. I said that on the little video today. Opinion on the LGBTQ. They get they better get out of it. Time's running out. Listen, everybody sins. All Christians still sin. A real Christian has been washed of their sins by Christ. So I'll say if you're not aware of your sin or your lifestyle, if you're not aware that it's a sin, a major sin against God, whatever it is then, you know, how can you be a Christian if you got no awareness of your own self? Sister Jen, what's up, sister? Yeah, we'll have to get this started in a few. We've done 44 minutes and gotten nowhere. <laughs> Praise God. We're going in about 18 to 20 days. This is it. This is it. The fig tree had to start. The fig tree can't be random. It can't be two different years. It can't be three different years. It was 1949. That's the fig tree. That's why it's this year. Yes, we're going to look at the Psalms tonight.
Praise God. All right, we ready to go here? Because I'm, I'm going to have to look down and try to get focused. If you are an atheist, you will miss the rapture, and you'll be in the tribulation, and you'll still have a chance to be saved. So remember I told you that if you end up in the rapture or in the tribulation. Oh, here or up on. I, th I think we'll be changed here, brother will be changed down here. The, the Bible says in the moment, of, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be changed. So I think we're changed and then we shoot up. Amen, Brother Greg. There it is, Psalm 122, verse four. Spoiler alert, that's the rapture. Psalm 122, verse four is the rapture, 100%. You can disagree. I know it is, and when we get up there, we'll all know it. Praise God. Amen. Love one another. Mm, that might end up being a quantum tattoo dot, the mark, and all that. All right, let's do a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you with everything inside of us. Lord, please be with me. Let me flow on this somehow, Lord. You know I always stress about it. I want everybody in here's heart and mind to be blessed by your word, Lord, your amazing eternal word. Help me to do it, Lord. Bless us all, one unit, one accord, one mind, lifting you up. All glory be to you. We lift up your word. Your word is amazing. We pray for blessings now in this Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, praise God. All right, here we go. Listen, I, I, everybody talks about Daniel 9. Daniel 9 is referred to so many times, right? It, it really is, you know, Antichrist, the, the 70th week, all of it. I'm going to read it just because I, I don't know if we've ever read Daniel chapter 9. So let's read it and then we'll go from there. Daniel 9 verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. We got to pause. You got to think about this. I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years. Do you get what that means? Daniel, they say, was roughly 15 years old when he went into Babylonian captivity. He's now 83 years old, Roughly 68 years later, this old man is studying the books of the Bible and he's reading the prophet Jeremiah that says, you know what? This punishment here is only going to be 70 years, which he knew they were going to be delivered in two years. So Daniel the prophet understood by Jeremiah the prophet how? out of the book. He did the math and out of the books, he figured out a prophecy. Can you imagine that? Daniel figured out maybe even the day and the hour. We don't know if he did, but maybe because Daniel knew when they left, he was 15 years old. So they left. Maybe it was the same day. Maybe God did it right to the T back then. That sounds like God. So he understood by the books. We're going to understand tonight by the books that we're going to be raptured in about 20 days, give or take, give or take. And as we get closer to this day, maybe God reveals even more to us. Maybe this world goes bonkers more than it is now, praise God. All right, verse 3. Look what he did. This is what we have to do. I wanted to read this because, people, this is the message to us Christians right now. 
and I set my face to the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So once Daniel got the epiphany and figured it out by the books, he started fasting, praying, sackcloth, ashes. He went right to work praying to God. I mean, this, this really is an amazing thing. It's a great chapter, one of the all-time great chapters of the Bible. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made my confession. And I said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. Neither have we hearkened to your servants, the prophets, which spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Look at that, covered every base right there. The Lord spoke to all of them. O oh Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us, confusion of faces, as, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries to which you have driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against you. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, shame of face. They, they were in shame to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed your law, even by departing, that they might not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So he wasn't just reading Jeremiah, he was reading Moses too, the first five books. Moses has prophecies in Deuteronomy, all over the place, Leviticus. So Daniel was doing the work. Verse 12, and he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Now remember, Solomon built a glorious temple. This is the first temple being destroyed. This was a big deal. God said, you are wicked, adulterous, idolatrous. I'm gonna destroy that temple that represents my presence in my name of Jerusalem that I put my name on and then they let them out. This is Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, the book of Lamentations. He's watching them all be drug out, taken off to Babylon, the temple burned down, destroyed. This was a big deal. As it was written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayers before the Lord our God that we might turn from iniquities and understand your truth. And look, I'm pretty sure that was the end of Deuteronomy where Moses said, listen, if you guys screw up, you're gonna be judged. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he does. For we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought your people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have gotten you renowned, God made a name for himself, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all your righteousness, I beseech you, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem. Listen, 
God really does intertwine the people with Jerusalem, Mother Jerusalem, Heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, the New Jerusalem is called the Bride of Christ in Revelation 21. So it's like a real interchangeable type thing. But God cares about Jerusalem. It, 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 Jerusalem is a big deal. Okay, let me, I'm going to start over on that one. O oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, I beseech you, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O oh, our God, hear the prayer of your servant. This is amazing. Daniel's 83 in sackcloth and ashes on his face, praying this prayer to God. One man. I love this. Now, therefore, O oh, our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications and cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary that is desolate, destroyed, for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by your name, for we do not present our supplications before you for our righteousnesses, but for your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for your own sake, O oh my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Real quick, I want to interject. Uh, verse 18, it says, O oh my God, incline your ear. I had to look that up. The incline the ear is the same as Psalm 49. I will incline my ear. So remember when we did that last time, God is saying, open up your ears. I'm going to give you a riddle. Daniel said the same word back to God. So I re-looked it up and it also means bend your ear. So Daniel's saying, Lord, please bend your ear this way. Hear my prayer. Deliver your people. Listen, as far as him reading Jeremiah, it's a done deal. Um, you know, he knew they were going to be delivered after 70 years, and yet he's still begging for forgiveness. So this is like, a. there's so many lessons in here. Praise God. I, I, we can't wait to talk to Daniel. We'll be seeing him in about 20 days. All right, verse 20. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So that, that's a little sneaky thing in there. Daniel was still praying at the times that they were supposed to pray and do offerings in the temple, even though he was in Babylon and the temple was destroyed. So Daniel was faithful. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. I love that. Think about that. It's amazing. We can be given skill and understanding in interpreting and dividing the scriptures, especially in the end times with the riddles and the enigmas. Verse 23, at the beginning of your supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show you for you are greatly beloved. Could you imagine hearing that from the Lord? An angel is telling him, you're beloved by God. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So listen, in God's mind, think about this. In God's mind, 
them getting out of Babylon is already a done deal. It's already a done deal. So God gives Daniel a new vision. So you could almost say, because Daniel figured out that prophecy by the books, by the books of Jeremiah, God rewarded him for figuring that out and studying the books. That's the way I see it. I guess you could argue it, but that is the way I see it. So now he says, consider the vision, verse 24. 70 weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy, fulfill it, and to anoint the most holy. And man, I'm telling you, a lot of people think that's the temple. It could be both. It could be the temple and Christ. I look at it as Christ, like John the Baptist will probably anoint Christ to be king at the start of the millennium. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and to the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So that was a new vision. So Daniel got, listen, he got the all in there. He got the first coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, the antichrist is gonna you know, make it desolate desolate. The Antichrist is going to stop the sacrifices in the middle. There's a ton of information in there. So I look at that as Daniel kind of got rewarded because he understood by the books. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. And remember the video that I did on Elisha and the Shunammite story. Elisha said, the Lord has hidden this from me. And he's trying to get the boy to come back to life. Didn't work the first time. He laid on him, praying. He went back in the house to and fro. Second time, the boy sneezed seven times. So I took that as typology. I could be wrong on that one. I'm not dogmatic on it, but it made sense. And it really looked like it could be typology. So Elisha, it was hidden. The rapture's hidden from us. We went to and fro through the book and we've narrowed it down to this time. Praise God, let's go. <laughs> okay. All right, should I do this part right now? Okay, I'll do this real quick. Listen, you guys gotta help me out with this one, honestly. But I'm gonna do this real quick. This is just something I noticed. I don't know if there's anything to it. So if somebody can chew on this for real, then maybe somebody else can get a revelation. I couldn't, I just see the numbers. I couldn't get anything full out of it. Genesis 46, 26 and 27. Okay, all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, remember Joseph Save them, right? He's the he's the second in charge. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were three score and six, 66, okay? So Genesis 46, 26, you have the number 66, 
66 books in the Bible, 22 is one of God's perfect numbers, 22, 22, 22, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. It's there, I don't know what it means. Look at 27. And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three score and 10. So first it says 66, then it says 70, okay? Now, I won't turn to it, but Deuteronomy 10.22 says the same thing, and it says 70 souls, 70, okay? Now, when Stephen retells the story in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7, Now, again, I, I'm just spitballing this. Like, it, somehow it means something. All right, this is Acts chapter 7, verse 14. So instantly I see this, 7, 7, 7, 7, 14. I see three sevens, right? So Acts chapter 7, verse 14 would look like a contradiction. We know there's no errors or contradictions in God's word, but look what it says. Then sent Joseph, and Stephen's recalling the whole story. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred were three score and 15 souls. 75. So why is it 75? Amen, sister. Now listen, Here's, here's where I'm going with this. So number one, that says 75, not 70. I don't know why. But Abraham in the book of Genesis was called out at 75 years old. I told you, he had to wait 25 years till the son of promise was born at the appointed time in the time of life. So Abraham was called out at 75. Israel right now is 75 years old. 1948, 2023, do the math. Now, Big Tree starts in 1949, but technically they're 75 right now, okay? Now look at this. So I put that together with this one. And look, I could be stretching, I don't know, but if somebody can come up with something, say a prayer, all these 75. So Abraham called out a 75, Israel 75 right now, and look at this little kicker on the end of it. Isaiah 66, 9. Isaiah 66, 9 adds up to 75. Look what it says. Shall I bring to the birth? Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Says the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth? And shut the womb, says your God. Two rhetorical questions that says God is going to deliver the baby. Verse 7, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Pre-tribulation rapture. Revelation 12.5, that's our rapture. Probably 20 days from now possibly on 9-11. But look at that. Isaiah 66, 9 adds up to 75. So did God do a 75 connection there? It looks like it. I mean, is it coincidence? So I don't know, but I it all stood out to me on the 75s. So praise God, that was that little thing there. And if somebody can add to that, you'll have to let me know in the comments or, or something on a video. All right, where are we at? All right, let's, uh, and I got a lot on there. I might do that later. We're into this pretty good. Okay, 1949. Please just think about what I'm gonna say right now. This is how we know the fig tree started in 1949. 1948 
less than 24 hours, they were in a war from really seven different nations. They did not shoot forth. They, they didn't have a nation if they lost the war. So David Ben-Gurion's announcement means nothing if they lose that war. So look what happened in 1949. They formed a government. They won the war on March 10th of that year. They were accepted into the United Nations. They started the IDF, their military. And God made a huge announcement in Psalm 49, 1949, that it matches up. And he said, hear this, all you inhabitants of the world. Okay, so ninth. Psalm 50 says, the mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken, past tense. So he th that's pointing back to Psalm 49. So without a doubt, the fig tree is 1949. I want you to believe that. It's here. That, that's what it means. So they're into the United Nations. They start a, go they start a government. They start a military um, the war ended. They won the war miraculously. God makes an announcement in 1949. Do we need any more proof than that? Jesus said, behold the fig tree. When it shooteth forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is near. So let's go to Luke 21 real quick. We're, we're almost to the Psalms. I, I got to do this because this is cool. And listen, for I'm gonna, I don't even know how I can do this, but I'm going to do this. The, the people that have been with me for a year and a half, ask any one of them. We've been digging out the word, shooteth forth for so long, you have no idea. That word means germination, hurajo, ha, suke, there it is. It means germination. It means two weeks. We, we thought it was going to be spring because we studied that word, okay? So then, let me just read it out of Luke. He said, he spoke to them a parable, hurajo, ha, suke in the Greek. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. So that was, you know, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan. So it's all perfect because they all shot up at that time. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. Uh, uh, summer, that word is only used here. The word means heat. So we were thinking spring, when things shoot forth, when things turn green. Again, it means germination. So we were dead set on the spring of this year, looking at the spring, looking at the spring. So God did an evolution to, for us with this word. And here we are in the time of life. So stay with me on this. This will be great and, and it'll be short. Okay, so that's where we started with this shooteth forth. Summer, in the, in the concordance, the Greeks concordance, it means heat. The word is numbered 2330. 2330. So the heat, the fire, the tribulation will be from 2023 to 2030. I'm telling you, I believe that with all my heart. The word for summer is heat, and the number in the concordance is 2330, 2330. So now it's not just summertime, the season. God's saying that heat means tribulation, fire, judgment, all right? So you're still with me? So one day I was in Isaiah and this this isn't a revelation, but this is a gold a golden nugget that I found just on a fluke. Somebody told me, "Hey, the rapture's in Isaiah 26," and I've heard that before. We kind we're kind of familiar with Isaiah 26. Will be hidden. The dead will rise up. So I just kept reading. I was out by a fire. I did a fire. It was a daytime fire. I had coffee. I just kept reading. 
And look, look what I found, Isaiah 27, 6 through 8. So I'm reading and I see this. Remember, the key words like incline. I just did incline with you earlier. I'm recognizing the same words now. It says, he shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root, the fig tree. He shall cause them that come from Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the whole world with fruit. Think about that. And fill the face of the world with fruit. For those of you that do not know, you can Google it. Israel is like number five or six in the world for exporting fruit. Tiny little Israel that was an absolute wasteland and desert in 1948 is now like the fifth leading country in the world that exports fruit. Look it up. It's there. God said, when I bring you back and bud, Brother Greg says four. That's even more impressive. Four. Israel, a desert. God said, when I bring you back, you're going to fill the whole world with fruit. Just think about that. Chew on that. When you witness to somebody, show them that verse. Show them that verse. That's God fulfilling prophecy. Now it gets better. Okay, so I'm going to skip verse 7, but 7 is, is God hasn't given up on Israel. That's basically what it means. Look at verse 8. Here was the gold epiphany. Now again, the verse is the gold. It's not even the revelation of the verse, although it is, but it's not hard to figure out is what I'm saying. Look at verse eight. It says, in measure. That word measure in the Hebrew means specific period of time. In measure, when it shoots forth, and that's what triggered my brain. I'm like, shoots forth? That's our word. I told you, we've been studying the word shoots forth. In measure, when it shoots forth, you will debate with it. God said you'll debate with it. You'll contend with it. What have people been doing? When the fig tree generation start? 1948, 1949, 1950? Does, does it even mean that? We're debating with the fig tree when it shoots forth. I've been chewing on this for a year. Me and my family, I'm telling you, we have been. God said, in measure, when it shoots forth, you will debate with it. So we're not done yet. So ultimately, and I'm going to quicken it up right now. Ultimately... Again, germination, when the leaves turn green, uh, when the figs are green, but they're not ripe. We've covered everything. Do you know what I think the shooteth forth actually means? I think it means the rapture itself. So we were looking at when do the figs shoot forth? When do the leaves shoot forth? And God brought us through this whole thing and said, look, look at this, Isaiah 42, 9. Isaiah 42, 9. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. If this is right, if Jesus looks at me and says, that was it, you nailed it, I'll be thrilled. Because this, listen, when God does an enigma, he ain't making it easy. You, We got to dig it out. It's a puzzle. You see a puzzle piece and you can't tell what's on it. And you got to find that puzzle piece. This is glorious. It's the honor of kings to search out what God has concealed, an enigma, in a riddle, in a puzzle. So look at this, Isaiah 42, 9, God speaking words in red, behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So there's spring forth, stay with me, spring forth. Before they spring forth, before they shoot forth, I tell you of them. 
Amos 3, 7, I do nothing, but I reveal it to my servants, the prophets first. This is God's beautiful, the way he does things. Now get this. So he's doing a new thing. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. A mystery, something new. The rapture was a mystery. Isaiah 43. Where did I write it? 43.19. Now get this one. So next chapter, 43.19. Words in red. Again, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. I mean, th listen, this blew me away. I hope you guys are getting this. Behold, I will do a new thing. Same language, what we just read. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Think about that. So now... The spring forth is the rapture. Bring forth, shoot forth, spring forth, stretch forth. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? God is saying to Israel, when the rapture happens, will you know that I've done it? And they will. That is Psalm 122, verse 4. So when we get to it, I'll, I'll remind us that we did it, okay? Or I'll remind us that this is all a part of it. So if I went to Psalm 122, it, listen, when we are raptured, the Bible says it'll be a revelation to Israel. It'll be a testimony to Israel. It will be a warning to Israel. We just shot Forth. So instead of leaves in the summertime and the springtime, the actual shoot forth is the rapture. And here's the kicker. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Why did God put that in that verse? That's Revelation 12, 6. That's the remnant. He's going to hide them. They have a place in the wilderness. It all matches up. So God said, I'll make a way for you in the wilderness. And he's going to make rivers out there. He has to supernaturally sustain them just like he did when they brought them out of Egypt. The children of the wilderness. This is way past Egypt. This is future. Oh, praise God. I hope you guys are getting that one. So anyway, back to... Lost my place. So if you look at it from all that, that we're the actual shoot it forth. And again, I, I studied Luke 21 like crazy. Almost every word. He spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own. You see and know. The Jews will see the rapture and they will know of your own selves, what? That summer is near. The tribulation is near. So after the rapture, they're going to know the heat. 2330 is near. So praise God. I hope I put that together right. And look at this one. So you guys know about this verse now. I know you do. Everybody kind of discovered it together. Watchmen are on this verse for sure. Jeremiah 820. Remember this one? The harvest is past. The summer basket of fruit. Amos 8 and Micah 7, 2. Okay? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. This is what the Jews are going to say after 9-11 when we're raptured. Praise God. So that was, let me see. I hope that all made sense. 
I, I truly do because I, I wanted to get all that out. That that was important. That that was a matchup of God's word. Where'd my paper go? There it is. I mean, My, Micah 7-2, we're, we're the basket of fruit, gone. Amos, what do you see, Amos? I see a summer basket of fruit. God didn't even explain what it meant. It was us. It was us. Praise God. So the fig tree starts in 1949. Add 80 years to that, that's 2029. Add the extra year, that's 2030, minus one day, it will not go to 81 years. That's why we know it's 1949. If I said anything else, you have to know. Remember, Jesus said, behold the fig tree. That generation has to start. It can't be random. And 1950 points back to 1949. Praise God, Brother Mike. Praise God. I wanted that to make sense. It's all there. So even the language in Isaiah 66, bring forth, the child is br bring forth. It's all kind of the same word. Shoot forth, stretch forth, bring forth, spring forth. I mean, God did this in an amazing way. I'm telling you, unbelievable. So, all right, praise God. Listen, you guys want to see something funny? All right, turn to Psalm 108. This is now we're getting into the psalm study. My family will probably remember this and they'll crack up. All right, Psalm 108. Let me see if I can get it up here on the screen. This is very, very quick. This is 10 seconds. This is awesome. All right, praise God. Watch this. Now it's far back. Does anybody remember when uh, President George W. Bush had the shoe thrown at him? Check it out. There's the shoe thrown at him. Anybody remember that? Praise God. <laughs> All right, stay with me. There's the shoe thrown at George Bush in 2008. That was 2008. You can Google it and look it up. Psalm 108, I told you, the Psalms match up with the years. So you think God put that incident in his Bible? Let's see. Psalm 108, verse nine. Verse nine. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Over Philistia will I triumph. So listen. If anybody wants to dig out that George Bush incident, I'll bet you, this is in Iraq, by the way. He's in Iraq. So I'll bet you that reporter, somehow God knows, yeah, verse 9, 108 verse 9, matches up with the year 2008. Look what God put. Moab, and I'll bet you that guy's connected to Edom or Moab, the reporter that threw the shoe. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing? Think about that. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Over Philistia will I triumph. So listen, that could be wrong, but if it's right, it's crazy. <laughs> Isn't it? All right, Psalm 117. Psalm 117. Now here's a challenge for the Lord. How's God going to take a psalm that only has two verses in it, two verses in it, and make it pertain to something in 2017, right? So Psalm 117 
is our year 2017. Here we go, two verses. Look what Psalm 117 says. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Right there, that's interesting. He's not talking to just Israel. We know Israel's God's people. This is Old Testament times. Why is he talking to the world? Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. That's verse one. <laughs> For his merciful kindness is great. Remember that word great. For his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise you the Lord. We just read Psalm 117. What was so great about 2017? The great American eclipse. God gave America a seven-year warning. This is why the whole world should praise him. Now, the whole world missed it, right? They, they were fascinated by the great American eclipse. They said 150,000 people lined up to be in it as it swept across the United States of America. It was a warning and it got named the great American eclipse. What else was great in that year? Revelation 12 sign, one and two says, and there was a great sign in heaven. So all glory to God, all praise to God. Look what it says. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. Why? Because he just gave you two incredible end time signs. The Revelation 12 sign and the great American eclipse. Praise God. Look what, it, well, look what it's called. For his merciful kindness. Merciful kindness is great toward us. He gave us a warning. God blessed us. Monica saved in 2017. Praise God right there. And listen, the last thing, the last thing that was great in 2017, Hulk Hogan, I mean Donald Trump, the scripted government that we live under, he made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Tel Aviv, we all know, isn't the capital of Israel. God put his name on Jerusalem. So in December of 2017, Trump made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. So two verses, God matched it up with the year. It, it was, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, come on. That's why it says, the truth of the Lord endures forever praise you the lord listen i love that one when we listen when me and my study group the family started doing this we started bouncing around the psalms the only problem is i don't know history right you got to study like what went on that year it's not always about america you know what i mean but you know we we have been the number one superpower since the 70s so it makes sense that God has some references to America in there. Praise God. Let's go. Okay. All right. Here we are. Now, we're, now we've made it to our study 93 minutes later. <laughs> All glory to the Father. Listen, I told God, I said, please try to relax me tonight. I do get hyped up. I get rushed and... Again, I always sweat this out. I want it to be right. Listen, I don't. you guys got to know this about me. I don't care about hardly anything else in life. Obviously, my family, the kids, all that. But nothing else. I just, I don't stress over nothing but this. So this is like the only thing that I really take serious, serious. All right. Now, please... I want to take one second, five minutes. Praise God, brother. Five minutes and remember what happened to us in 2020. Psalm 120 is the beginning of the Psalms of Ascent. These are literal. 
They're literal. Psalm 120 is 2020. 15 years later, 2034, we will be in that temple. And I got a new verse for you when we get to Psalm 134. So I know this is going to go long, but you got to stay with it. We'll get it done. Yes, 2020 was COVID. And listen, we can't forget about COVID. Look what they did to us. Do you remember the celebrities on commercial after commercial after commercial? You're killing people. Get vaccinated. Well, how dare you? I don't care about your freedom. Remember Arnold? You know, the, the whole thing. Amen, Brother John. We hated it. They shut down businesses, colleges, schools, all schools, everything. This world was on fire. We were in it, in the thick of it. Can't go out without a mask. Everything shut down. Governments handing out $600 to everybody. You know, double payments, the whole thing. I, I actually worked through it, believe it or not. You know, going into the grocery stores. I worked for Loomis. That was my job. I was the uh, the coin machines that you put the money into. I picked up the coins. So, you know, listen, I'm being honest with you. The first time Trump made that first announcement, I, I thought I was going to die. Like, I, I was actually afraid for about a two-week period thinking, man, this is nuts. He said hundreds of thousands instantly are going to die. Anyway, we remember it. So what dawned on me is, man, the Jews been singing the Psalms of Ascent for a, a thousand years. And then if they've been singing them the last 2,000 years, that means they could be have sung these Psalms for 3,000 years, right? Think about that. And yet these are literal, literal in our time. So I thought, man, Lord, the first two years Psalm 120, Psalm 121 of the Psalms of Ascent, we're going up to Jerusalem, are literally tainted by COVID-19, the whole thing, you know, the whole COVID shutdown. And you got to know that it was a test run. It was an absolute test run and not just a test run because they did get the vaccine in a lot of people, right? They got it in a lot of people. Listen, I'll just say this real quick. It is not the mark of the beast. We should all know this. If you're in here and you're a Christian and you had to take it, because we're going to get to that, you had to take it, your job, you didn't know what to do, it was a struggle, you're still saved. It doesn't discredit your salvation. You didn't take the mark of the beast, I'm telling you. So as much as I like to tell people they're not saved, the vaccine does not make you not saved. God knows you were up against it, you took it, you will still be saved 100%. Wake up call for sure, absolute test run. This was our 2020 and 2021. Okay, so praise God. I mean, some people think, oh, we're just back to normal. And they forget about what we've been through. I remember watching Fox News and the hospitals in Italy are overflowing. People are dying. Doctors are dying. They all got the moon suits on. You know, we got to get, we gonna need help. Remember Trump? Trump sent the mercy ship into New York and they never used it. You know, he had a whole ship in there and blah, blah, blah. So it, it was just all nuts. But anyway, I, I actually wrote this down. I put, we started with COVID-19 in 2020, and we will end up in the Millennial Temple at our wedding feast, the Psalms of Ascent. We are going up to Zion. God chose Zion for his dwelling place. Praise God. And listen, they say that, COVID's coming back, right? COVID's coming back. So they got, or, or they got another variant. Everybody's been hearing this lately. So they're getting ready to do it. And I think they'll do it. I think they'll do it right after the rapture. They're going to just get people and suck them right back in again. New booster being promoted. I did not hear that. So praise God, it's all coming back. And it's just a fact. 
Okay, Psalm 120. I'll go through these semi-quickly. We'll get it done. Here we go. Psalm 120, our year 2020. In my distress, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. People, the Lord heard our prayers in that year. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips, lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Every time I read that line, all I can picture is Fauci and Trump every single day on Fox News, giving the report, all the death toll, all the stuff going on. That's what I think of when I read that. So we're asking God in this psalm, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. God answers in verse three. This is God talking. What shall be given to you, question mark, or what shall be done to you, you false tongue, you deceiver? God's asking them the question, what am I going to do to you, Fauci, Bill Gates, you know, all, all the rest of them, all the whole crew. Look at, remember Psalm 45, the sharp arrows into the heart of Hitler. Hitler died on April 30th, 430. Elohim is 430. God signed Hitler's death. Look at verse four. Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. See, when you read that, you don't, we don't even know what that means. We don't. But when I looked up the coals of juniper, juniper is the broom tree. It's the juniper tree. I, I looked it up and the stories of the juniper tree over in Israel, they said, if you went camping in Israel, camping, and you, and you left your campfire burning, you literally could come back a year later and the coals would still be hot. They would still be hot after a year. God is saying, you're going to get sharp arrows and the coals of juniper. That's the fires of hell. So they will be sent to hell. That's what it means. I dug it out. Praise God. If you want to look at that, by all means, look at all this stuff. Okay. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshach, that I dwell in the tents of Keter. That's like the black-haired goats. That's just the, the psalmist, us, saying we're surrounded by evil people. My soul has long dwelled with him, excuse me, that hates peace. So think about it. Our souls have long dwelled with them that hates peace peace. They oppose peace. Verse seven, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So that's the world we were living in in 2020, and we're still living in it now. Praise God. Let's go. Let me just look real quick. Oh, I got to go to this. All right, th this is the part two, and you guys may or may not know this, but this is one of the first things I ever taught on. I believe with my whole heart that we are living in Luke 21-25 right now. Right now is Luke 21-25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. This verse is so monumental. When I looked up distress of nations, that was COVID. That was COVID-19, 2020, 2021. Perplexity, what a word. Not knowing what to do in a difficult situation. Again, all the people in here that unfortunately had to succumb to taking the vaccine to save their job, to feed their families, to pay their mortgage, all of it. It was perplexity. God said the whole world would be distressed with perplexity. That is 
absolutely, absolutely what is going on. So the next line, verse 26, is tribulation. That's why I say we're living in Luke 21, 25. Look at this. No man knows the day or the hour. I'm too lazy to study. Carol, Carol, this makes no sense. If you studied yourself, you would know that the story has moved on since there. And besides that, the day or the hour is the second coming, not the rapture. Paul revealed the rapture 25 years later and said, behold, I show you a mystery. So, oh, oh, okay. I thought you were saying it to me. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Carol, forgive me. I didn't say nothing bad, but I thought you were saying I didn't study because nobody knows the day or the hour. All right, praise God. Let's move on. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you look up real quick. It is September. It's September because the fig tree started in 1949. It has to have a concrete start date or it doesn't work. Jesus said, behold, it, it has to be a time. Awkward. That's not too awkward. I've done this before. I look up, I see a comment. I don't know what's going on. And then I make a comment. <laughs> All right, praise God. Here we go. Psalm 121. Listen, Psalm 121 is a famous Psalm, right? We all call on this Psalm. Yeah, Repo Man's coming into the group. Yeah, well, I'll get that done. Praise God. L look at Psalm 121. The year 2021, this is gold. You, listen, if you're not even with me on the years matching the Psalms, this one should put you over the edge too. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. So we're, we're still in lockdown. We still got masks. We're still being called murderers because we won't take the vaccine. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He that keeps you will not slumber. Now, I think the Lord's talking to us there, the Christian, because the next line is for Israel. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Look at verse five. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. What does that mean? The Lord is the shade upon our right hand where we would take the mark of the beast that's coming up in the tribulation very shortly. Remember, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. A thousand years is like a day. I did the math. One minute to God is about eight months our time. So one second to God is 4.22 days. So this isn't a lot of time elapsed for God. Keep that in mind. But look at that. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. Now, to me, that's for us and for the remnant. It's like a twofold. Look at verse six. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. How can the moon smite anybody by night? We don't get smited by the moon except when it's hot as the sun. So we, we have to turn to it real quick. Isaiah 30, 26. All right, Rue, hold on. And listen, guys, th this is important. You, you gotta see that, right? Look at Psalm 121. You'll never look at it the same again. You'll know it's 2021. So again, look what God's saying. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Why is he saying this in 2021? He's given us a warning. So he's talking to us. 
We won't be smitten by the sun. We'll be gone. And he's talking to the remnant where he'll supernaturally protect them. Isaiah 30, 26 says this. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord binds up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. That's tribulation. That's tribulation talk. Day of the Lord, judgment day. So God put it in Psalm 121. This is miraculously amazing. Verse seven, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He'll preserve you from all evil. That means protect you. So he could be talking to the remnant here. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. That, that could be remnant, that could be us. So again, this is God telling us what's coming. Okay, Psalm 122. Let me just make sure. All right, listen. The shade on the right hand, God said, I'll be your shade upon your right hand, meaning you won't have to take the mark. Remember, Revelation 3.10 says God's going to test the whole world. He's going to test the whole world with the mark of the beast in tribulation. He's telling us and the remnant, I'm the shade on your right hand. You won't be tested. So praise God. Think about that. And I think that clearly proves that the vaccine now that's already in play is not the mark of the beast. Can't be. He's the shade upon the right hand. So that's like a dual fulfillment psalm, Psalm 121. Praise God. Ah, shoot, I got to do this. I just read my notes. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Praise God. All glory to God. We love his word. And listen, if you're watching this, like say tomorrow or the next day, take your time with it. You don't got to watch it all at once, but this is all the word of God. Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 49. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel was in the court of the king, but he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, this is after Daniel interpreted the dream, and the king was all pumped and said, man, Daniel, your God's the best, okay? So watch this. So now, just the next chapter, Daniel 3, I'm going to read verses 14 and 19. And listen, I, I got this from Chuck Missler, but I'm tying it in to this little section. All right, so Daniel 3.14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? You guys know the story. He set up the image. They wouldn't bow down to it. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar's full, full of fury, and the form of his vis visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was than it was to be heated. So think about it. The sun is seven times hotter. The moon is as hot as the sun. This fiery furnace was heated up seven times hotter, right? So we know Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said, King, true, O King. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. 
Praise God. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. Jesus saved them. Anyway, my point is Chuck Missler brought this up and he said, where's Daniel? Where's Daniel in this story? So Daniel's in the king's court. So Daniel here is like a type of the rapture. Daniel was gone before the oven got heated up seven times hotter tribulation. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is like, you know, the third that will be saved. So I just wanted to throw that out there because we're talking, God was talking in Psalm 121, the sun's not going to scorch you and the moon's not going to smite you either. Praise God, all glory to God. So that could have been a little Daniel is us in that story, and he was nowhere to be found. All right, Psalm 122 is the mother load. Listen, part of the mystery, part of the enigma is saying, hey, is the Lord looking back on this Psalm? Like Psalm 50 kind of points back to 49, and it moves forward. Psalm 49 was right on the money. Psalm 48 on the money. Psalm 47 looked forward to 48. It's all part of the mystery. So I thought we had to be raptured last year because of this Psalm, Psalm 122. Please, if you're going to read anything and get anything out of this whole study, Psalm 122 is what you want to study. This is the rapture Psalm. Look what it says. So we went from the Lord shall preserve your going out, your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore, forever. So that, that could apply to us. That's 121. 122 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, now think New Jerusalem, think heaven. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord, the house that Jesus built for us, uh, the city. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Now get this line. You won't know what it means at first. It's crazy. I remember when I discovered this, it was mind blowing. Where the tribes go up, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord to the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. I looked up the word tribes. Tribes means rod. It means correcting rod, a staff, a rod, a scepter. We're the rods of the Lord. This is absolutely the rapture. Look what it says. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, not the tribes of Israel, the rods of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel. That word testimony means revelation, evidence, warning. That's why I did the whole spring forth. We spring forth, they see it. It's a testimony to them when the rods go up. Uh, uh, revelation 2, 26, 27, 28, right around there. We will rule and reign with him with rods of iron. Um, listen, I think it even says it in Revelation 12, 5. Let me look real quick. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. So that is no hearsay. That one, I a thousand percent believe we're the rods. When you see tribes, you say, okay, tribes, tribes, 12 tribes of Israel. No, it means rods. So praise God. And listen, the word compact, think about this. Verse three, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Compact is, is the word in the 
in the Hebrew lexicon 2266. It means to join together, to bind together, to unite, to join oneself to something. So think about Revelation 21. The angel said, hey, I'll show you the wife of the Lord, the wife of the Lamb. Here comes our city, one piece, compact together coming down out of heaven to land on the new earth. This is the word compact. So again, this is what it means. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. We'll be all united together in this city where the rods go up, the rods of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel. What do we do when we go to the throne of the Father? To give thanks to the name of the Lord. That's all we bring to the table, just for the record, so everybody knows. We go up there with thanksgiving and praise. We bring nothing else to the Lord. Praise God. Now listen, I'm not going to dig out the rest of Psalm 122, but it's all there to be dug out because we got to keep moving. So set thrones for judgment, verse 5. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Why are we praying for Jerusalem here? Because we've been raptured and now Jerusalem is in the tribulation. It's all there. Praise God. Okay. Psalm 123. And listen, a rod is also a scepter. That could have been translated scepter as well. A scepter is a mark of an authority. I got to say this, a king has a scepter. I told you we're going to be kings. We're going to be kings and priests. Kings have scepters. Praise God. Oh, and listen, I got to say this. This is why you got to dig out every word. I'm telling you, every word in the Greek, every word in the Hebrew, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the word go up, the word go up means ascend, to meet, to depart, to shoot forth. That word go up means shoot forth. All glory to God. That's our shoot forth. All right, Rue, I'll let you out. I've been making you wait. Ascend to meet, depart, shoot forth. And look what it says, to come up before God, to be taken up, to exalt. That's all in the word, go up. All right, praise God. Let me let these guys out real quick. Oh, come on, knuckleheads, let's go. Come on, boo, come on, come on. Come on, I don't want to get up twice, come on. Bobo, come on. All right. <laughs> you don't want to go out. You don't want to go out, big boy. All right. He wants to hear the Bible study. Can't blame him. Praise God. All right, so listen, just stay with me. I thought we'd be raptured in 2022 because of Psalm 122, it matches up with the years. Does it make sense that the rapture is the greatest event in history? So God gave a warning. So again, Psalm 123 only has four verses. So stay with me on this. If we get raptured on 9-11, literally 18, 20 days from now, whatever it is, there's still a half a year on God's calendar, a full half of year in the tribulation. The tribulation's gonna start, if it's Feast of Trumpets, that makes sense, all of it. God has a half of year to fulfill Psalm 123. That's what I'm saying. And listen, there's not much in there, but, but there is a lot in there. Look at Psalm 123, and, and I'm telling you, I see it this way. I hope you see it this way. To you, they don't even say Lord. They don't even say Lord. They don't say God. They say, 
to you lift I up my eyes. O you that dwell in the heavens. They know they just missed it. Don't forget Isaiah 42, 9, Isaiah 43, 19. God said, I'm going to do a new thing. When it shoots forth, God said in 43, 19, will you not know it? Psalm 123 is the proof that they'll know it. And Psalm 122, it's a testimony to them. This is all perfect. I hope you guys are seeing this. To you, I lift up my eyes. O you that dwell in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants. Remember, Jesus said, you're no longer servants. I call you friends. And this is why I'm telling you what I'm doing. So just keep that in mind. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. So listen, the servant back in those days were like this. They're ready to go, ready to go. Oh, what do you need, master? What do you need, um, mistress? What do you need? What do you need? They're ready. They're working. They're, they're on cue. This is what the Jews are doing. We just missed something huge that only our God can do. So they're going to get the revelation. The remnant's going to understand. They're waiting for mercy because they know they missed it. Jeremiah 8.20, the summer is past. Harvest is over. We are not saved. Oh, this is so perfect. Verse three, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Man, I just thought of something. There's verses, I can't think of them right now, that says Jeru Israel will get a double portion, portion of judgment in the tribulation. This is maybe why they keep repeating it twice. It could be. All right. They're filled with contempt because Antichrist, or the leader at the time, in the beginning, whoever that'll be, makes a deal with them, makes the seven-year covenant. We read it in Daniel, and part of it will be, yes, you get the temple mount, you can build your temple. This is going to make the world on high hate the Jews even more. They hate them now already, but they're going to hate them more. Verse four, last verse, our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud, the hatred of the proud. The elites are gonna hate the Jews because the elites worship Satan. Satan hates the Jews. So this is what's going on here. Now with the four verses, do you get it? We're raptured next month. God has plenty of time to fulfill people hating on the Jews. They're already hated. But the key was they realized, oh, you that dwell in the heavens, we know you're up there because you just pulled out your people up there. Israel just gave birth, Isaiah 54, 1, for the first time. We broke the womb. We we're the first child, praise God. All right, Psalm 124, let's go. All right, we're getting somewhere, peeps. We're getting somewhere. Psalm 124. Now, I went back and forth on this, so you know you guys can have an opinion on this for sure. If it had not been the Lord. Now, that's past tense. So this could have been at the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024, but still 2024. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, see, specific, back to the Jews, back to Israel. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. So even think about, it. there's the double repeating again. Then they had swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us, the hatred, the contempt. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. That could be the nations, the people. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. So there's the proud, the contempt of the proud. It's Listen, it's all tying in. Because if the world hates them because they're building a temple, this is when the Psalm 83 war. 
People will support, hey, all you surrounding nations, take them out. Take them out. Destroy them. And when you read Psalm 83, it's huge. Psalm 83, God delivers them that the whole world will know it's God. So this is perfect for 2024. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The fowlers are the trap setters, the trappers. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's Psalm 124. And listen, I think it's Psalm 83 and not Ezekiel because again, Psalm 83 has to happen first. And besides that, Ezekiel 38, 39, 36, and 37, God already has a lot of details about that war. He doesn't need to do it here. If you notice, this is tribulation, people. We're in the tribulation now in the Psalms of Ascent. So they're short. God's just given us nuggets, just given us nuggets. So it doesn't have to be detailed like a full Ezekiel 38. All right, verse 125. Let me just check my notes, see if I missed something. Yeah, it's it's just, it has to be Psalm 83 wars before Ezekiel war. All right, now get this. this. This one, Brother Greg is in here. I think he spotted this first. Either Greg or Eddie, Eddie back in the days. I forget who found this first, but it was somebody else, not me. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abides forever. So God is saying, I'm drawing a line in the sand. You trust me or are you going to be in the world? As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from here after even forever. Doesn't that match up with Psalm 121? Said, I'm going to take care of you from now and forever. Now, here, here's verse three. For the rod of the wicked, the correcting rod of the wicked, shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands to iniquity. If you take the mark of the beast, think about that. So, again, I, somebody else found that when we first discovered the years matched up with the Psalms. So unless the righteous put forth their hands to iniquity. Now, think about this. If this is 2025, uh, the midpoint of the tribulation isn't till a little bit deep into 2026. So think about that. This is a warning psalm. This is a look ahead. It's a warning psalm. Praise God. Okay, verse 4. And look, I think there's a little Ezekiel 38 war in here. Do good, O Lord, to those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. I'm telling you, sheep, goat, wise, foolish, wheat, tares, they're all going to be separated. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Now, the reason I think Ezekiel 38 is in there somewhere, because Ezekiel 38 says God puts the hook in the jaw. He leads them to the mountains of Israel and says, come against my people, come on. And he says, they cover the mountains like a cloud and then God wipes them out. So I think that is a little veiled, sneaky reference to Ezekiel 38. Praise God. Look at, he says, if you go to your crooked ways, I'll lead you. I'll lead you forth with the workers of iniquity. I'll just add you to that group. But look what it says. But peace shall be upon Israel. Now think about the timing of this. This timing is perfect. So I said earlier, I got that epiphany that God takes care of the Jews for the first three and a half years. They probably don't even die. Not one Jew, maybe in the whole world, doesn't die in the first three and a half years. God can do that. 
But the second three and a half years is where it all goes bad because Antichrist comes into their temple. So the timing of this is perfect. They're still protected by God in 2025. Man, I smell a skunk. I, hold on. I pray to God that dog didn't get skunked. Boo, what's going on out there? Stand back. Hold on. Oh, God. Rue! Get in here. Come on. You get skunked? Come on. Let's go. Right, come on. You didn't get skunked, did you? All right, get in here. He must have sprayed somewhere else. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Rue got blasted one time. It was the worst skunk blast that I ever seen. There will be no skunks in heaven. There can't be. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for that. Oh, that would have... That would have been bad. Okay, the timing. That that's all of verse or Psalm one twenty five. Psalm one twenty six twenty twenty six. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. There's your Acts chapter two, people. Them that dream, them that get visions, you know, they, they're going to need it to escape or whatever's going on. We were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Think about the remnant, the people that God saves and protects. Their mouth is filled with laughter in the middle of the tribulation and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, think about this, then said they among the nations, that's what it means, the heathen, the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Now get this. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. The witnesses could be like the 144,000 at this point. He that goes forth and weeps, bearing precious seed, wheat and the tares, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. That, that's all wheat and tear talk. Man, that skunk smell is powerful in here. I don't, I don't have a window open or nothing. Oh, that's a miracle she didn't get sprayed. All right, praise God, Psalm 127. <laughs> now, get this, Solomon only wrote two Psalms. God had him write this one. Just think about that. It's perfect. It's perfect. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So, listen, the remnant is going to start having children Children is like a big theme right here because they're going to repopulate the millennium. But I do want to go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Now, now you see the tide shifted here. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. That's got to be the temple. That's why Solomon wrote Psalm 127. So they're in the temple 
making sacrifices and God saying, you're doing it all for nothing because I'm gonna destroy this temple. So listen, this stood out to me, Revelation 11, one and two. And there was given me a reed like to a rod and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is outside the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given to the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So they're in the holy city now. Jerusalem's not protected by God anymore. The Antichrist has come in. He's declared himself in the temple. They're going to tread under it for three and a half years, 40 and two months. But look, I was fascinated by this because then verse three is talking about Moses and Elijah. I will give power to my two witnesses. They shall prophesy for 1,200 threescore days. God never gave the measurements of this temple. So just think about it's bizarre in a way. He said a reed was given to him like a rod. He said, stand up and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship in it. I'm telling you, that's like God sizing up the temple when he pours the, I think it's the fourth or fifth vial on the seat of the beast because you know the Antichrist is sitting on the in the throne in the temple and God destroys the temple, of course. So, Psalm 127, to me, matches up with Revelation 11, which Revelation 11 is a little past the midpoint. 2027 is a little past the midpoint. This is more proof that it all matches up. Praise God. Psalm 128. Rue, you got to chill out for a minute, okay? The skunk's out there. We got to make sure he's gone. Man, I don't... I don't smell nothing on her. But it's in the house. Your eye looks all dark. All right, hold on. Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord that walks in his ways. For you shall eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house. Your children like olive plants round about your table. Remember, the olive tree is always a symbol of believing Israel. The fig tree was always a symbol of unbelieving Israel. Just so you decipher the two. Behold that thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. The Lord shall bless you out of Zion and you shall see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yea, you shall see your children's children and peace upon Israel. Psalm 128. Did you get skunked? Did you get skunked? Did you get skunked out there? You better not have. Yeah. All right, give me a minute. That was real, real. All right, get down. All right, Psalm 129. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, now say 2029. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth yet they have not prevailed against me. There's that double speech again. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long what? their furrows. So to me, the plowers plowing upon the back is like Holocaust. When you watch them bulldozing all those dead bodies, it's what? the only Whoa. thing I can think of. You know, trying to dig out the Hebrew words that's what it meant to me. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them all be confounded and turned back that hate Zion. Again, foolish, wise, wheat, tares, um, 
sheep, goat. The goats didn't give a drink of water to the Jews. The sheep did. They got to enter the kingdom. This is all that type of talk. So listen, the key to Psalm 129, and it's huge, is verse 4. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. So I won't look it up right now just for sake of time, but this is the year of recompense. You probably heard this by now. Isaiah 34, Isaiah 63. This is where Jesus was soaked in the blood. People get this wrong. That's not just Armageddon. He comes back early. He'll come back in 2029 while the angels are gathering sheep and Jesus is got the sickle out. This is Revelation 14. He thrusts in the sharp sickle. Armageddon is Revelation 19 at the end. So it's two different times. What, listen, when you see cut asunder, think the last verse of Matthew 24, 51. I, I'll turn to that one. Again, it's all key words with God. Look at this, Matthew 24, 51, the last verse in it. And, and shall cut him asunder. That's the exact same language. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So people don't believe this. They've argued with me in the comment section. Jesus is going to come back and he's going to wipe people out. He's going to slay them that blood will flow out of their body up to the bridle of a horse for a 180-mile period. I'm telling you, and that's 2029. And remember, it says, may Israel now say. So that one would have to match up the year. It matches up with Isaiah 34, Isaiah 63, uh, Matthew 24, 51, and, and even Revelation 19 and 14. So praise God, let's go. Psalm 130, this is our year 2030, right? The ultimate return of the Lord, the final second coming, because again, he comes back early. And listen, you can see he comes back early. Revelation 10, he comes back. So don't think that Jesus is sitting up there for the whole tribulation. He comes back. Psalm 130, out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? None of us. But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Double again. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mer mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Praise God. Listen, in my opinion, and I should do a whole study on this, this is the Old Testament saints being raised from the dead. This is Daniel 12, 2. So this is them being raised up out of the depths. Remember, they were in Abraham's bosom in the center of the earth on the side of paradise. Remember the thief on the cross? Today you will be with me in paradise. Christ descended below, preached to the spirits in prison. It's all tied together with the year 2030, praise God. So out of the depths, they cried, the depths of Abraham bosom, waiting to be resurrected. Job said in Job 19.25, I will stand on this earth again and be with my Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. I shall see him in my flesh. Job said, even though the worms eat my body, 
I will see him in my flesh. That was straight prophecy from the book of Job. Praise God. And listen, that's 2030. All right. All glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And look, I'm skipping a little bit, but not much. There's a lot in here. All right, Psalm 131, three verses. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from hereafter and forever. Listen, do you guys see the progression here? We started off with COVID. God said the sun won't shine on you, 121. 122 is the rapture. 123, they missed the rapture. They're begging God to have mercy. 124 is the Psalm 83 war. 125 is a warning, don't take the mark of the beast. 126 is the remnant and the world saying, man, God really blessed them guys. They're dreaming, they're laughing again. Psalm 127, God said, you made a temple, I'm gonna destroy it. Psalm 128 says, Hey, all you good people, you're going to see your children's children all through the millennium. Psalm 129, Jesus comes back and starts cutting people in pieces, cutting them asunder. Psalm 130 is them crying out of the depths of their soul, can't wait to get their new bodies, Old Testament saints. Psalm 131, they're like a weaned child, a weaned child. This is what they're saying. Matthew 18.3. Hold on, sister. Matthew 18.3. And said Jesus talking, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Look at that. Surely I, I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from hereafter and forever. Now listen, Rock Island Books Rock Island Books, he's saying now the whole 2031 thing. 2031 could be the very start of the millennium. If 2030 is the last year, and we, we read 2030, now 20, think about it. Psalm 131, 2031, they became like a child. And now forever, they'll be with the Lord because they wean themselves like a child. Jesus said, you can't go into the kingdom unless you're like a child. So this is probably the start of the millennium. Psalm 132, praise God. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, nor slumber to my eyelids, until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Why is this in Psalm 132? Why is it in 2032? They're talking about building a temple for God because Ezekiel 40 through 48 says the millennium has to have a temple. Do you get how perfect this is? You must believe that the Psalms match up with the years. Look at the story. It's telling a perfect story. Now we're talking about the first year of the millennium, the second year, building the millennial temple. All glory to God. It's clear as a bell. This, this is not even in mystery form. This is straight up, straight up. All right, and I'm going to read... I'm going to read most of it. Verse 10, Psalm 132, verse 10. 
For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth to David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of your body will I set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. These words are in red. The Lord's going to teach their children. Their children shall also sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation, his dwelling place. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud, the power, the authority of David. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall be his crown flourish. Remember, ultimately there will be bad people. There's still going to be sinners in the millennium. At the end, Satan rounds them up, so they're there. It's not perfect kingdom because they're still sinners. But he's going to teach the children. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So in the beginning, it seems like nobody's really going astray right away. So this is 2033. God says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Finally, we'll be in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So listen, Aaron, oil, priest, I think this is the year John the Baptist anoints Christ with oil. Daniel 9, 24, he anoints him as the king and probably on Feast of Trumpets. Uh, could be Feast of Tabernacles. We'll know when we get there. Psalm 134, praise God. Behold, bless you the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night, why did why is it night? God threw in night. I love the night. That It's so amazing that he put that one word in there. Which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Now, this is my opinion. I think 2034, the temple's done, Christ has been anointed, we're the bride, and this is the wedding feast because it's at night. So listen to me, the Psalms of Ascent, the 15 Psalms, starts with COVID, ends in Psalm 134, 2034, we're on the mountains of Jerusalem. Now, I promised you some cool verses. Here they come. The incredible book of Micah. Listen, we should all be reading the full book of Micah. It's full of juice. I guarantee there's more stuff in there. When I read this, I, I just couldn't even believe it. Micah chapter 4. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything else. I wrote in my notes this one perfect, incredible night. Listen, it's the Psalms of Ascent being fulfilled. The Jews possibly could have been singing this for 3,000 years, and now we're there in the temple praising God at nighttime. The place is all lit up. Just picture it in your mind. It's real. It's going to be real. We're going to be doing this. Look at Micah chapter 4, verse 1. 
But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord. Did you get that? That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow to it. Look at that verse. That's verse one. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Praise God. Listen, on your own time, read all of Micah 4, and then I'm just going to read because we're here. <clears throat> Micah 5, verses 1 through 3. Now gather yourself in troops. Remember that word troops was order in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Each man in his own order. Order meant prearranged marriage, which is us, which translated into the Old Testament troops. This could be us here, troops. Now gather yourself in troops, O daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. So that's obviously not in the millennium. Verse two, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me that is to be ruler in Israel. That's the birth of Christ, Micah 5, 2, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. So that's the prophecy, Jesus born in Bethlehem. We read it every Christmas. So that's Christ's birth. Our birth is verse three. Therefore will he give them up, the Jews, until the time that she which travails has brought forth, shoot forth, spring forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. So he's going to give up his Israel until the time that she which travails has brought forth. So praise God. This, this stuff's all amazing. Oh, that night will be pure ju jubilation, pure joy. All right, and listen, I, I won't read it, but back to Psalm 135, 132, God said, I'll teach your children. 135, 2035, he starts teaching the children, telling them about how he brought them up out of Egypt, doing the whole thing, going through the story, teaching the children. Remember, I don't even know where the verse is. I think it's in Isaiah 65, 66. It says the, the whole earth will be covered with the knowledge of the Lord, and it'll all start right in the beginning. So 135, he starts teaching the children. Now listen, I had one comment in one of my videos a while ago. So this is how we're gonna close this down. My regular family in here knows about this treat. I'm gonna give you a treat, it's awesome. Psalm 149, so the guy said to me in the comments, I don't think we're going to go from heaven to earth during the millennium. You know, we're going to be on earth in the millennium. I believe we'll be going up to New Jerusalem and back down here to the earth at will, according to the will of God. Because when I kept reading the Psalms to see what was up, I stumbled upon Psalm 149, which would be the year 2049. So 
18 years into the millennium, look what it says. Praise you the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. I think we're all going to be songwriters ultimately in our glorified bodies. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. He's the king now. He's king of kings. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and the harp. This is all joy, celebration, praising Jesus. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Here's us. Here's us, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Where's glory? Glory is up. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. That's Isaiah 57, 1 and 2. When we get raptured, it says we'll be sitting in our beds, walking in our uprightness. So here's a reference to singing aloud on our beds. So my thought is we'll be singing up in the New Jerusalem, millions of us, and the earth will be able to hear it. They'll hear the joy of the saints singing. I I'm telling you, I believe it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But that's what I believe this is saying. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Why are the saints wielding a two-edged sword in our hand 18 years into the millennium? Because the word of God is a two-edged sword and we are one with the word of God. It's flowing through us now. We know the word of God and this is how we're going to rule and reign with a rod of iron with the word of God. It all makes perfect sense. Seven, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Remember, God said afar off in Micah, the nations, you know, won't be doing good. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Verse 9, the last verse of Psalm 149, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. It's our honor. We searched out the rapture. It was the honor of kings to search it out. It is now our honor to be the rods of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse 4, the rods of the Lord go up to the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the Lord. And now God has honored us with ruling and reigning. If that doesn't get you excited, then I don't know what does, but in 18 to 20 days, this is going to start to be fulfilled. And listen, I got another comment of this. 15 years is the Psalms of Ascent. So if it started in 2020 and we're raptured literally three and a half years later, literally three and a half years later on God's calendar, so three and a half years Half, halfway through 2023, seven-year tribulation, that's 10 and a half. Three and a half years more brings us to Psalm 134. The 15th year of the ascent will be fulfilled, 555, triple grace, in the temple of the Lord. So I'm not saying that means anything, but... It's a clear pattern. Three and a half were raptured. Seven tribulation, three and a half to build the temple. The 15th, we've completed, literally fulfilled the Psalms of Ascent. Does that not make sense? Praise God, let's go. All glory to the Father. I think I got just about everything out. The kings, the saints, the bride, the wife, the body, the rods is us. We will be singing 
from the rooftops of New Jerusalem, heaven. Praise God. Amen. Listen, you guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with me the whole time. And, and if anybody's watching this after the fact, I'll speak to you now. Praise God. Watch this. Enjoy. Test it. Pray about it. God is glorious. He's revealed mysteries to us. Amen, tiny dice. He truly has. These are mysteries. And listen, reread it for yourself. The Psalms of Ascent. It flows like a perfect story. Does it not? It flows like a perfect story. It is a perfect story. Everything. The details that have to be done are done. It's all there. Amen, you guys. Amen. Oh, praise God. And listen, if I can pray, keep praying for me, I appreciate your prayers. I need them. If I can do the judgment study, I think I got the four, four different judgments and tricky stuff in the book of Revelation will make sense if I can put it all together. So that'll just be a fun study, has nothing to do with the rapture type timing, but it's just out of the word of God, praise God. Amen, Sister Deborah. Yeah, listen, the, the great thing about these lives is it automatically posts right to the channel. I don't have to do nothing. As soon as I end it, it posts. So, praise God. Look, at that last live did post, didn't it? Yeah, the last one I, I think posted. It had to have. Here's what happened. The last one posted, but on my phone, it kept spinning and saying downloaded. So ultimately, I had to delete that, but I think it posted automatically. So so it like did it twice or something. I don't know. It's weird. But man, I, I love me some Psalms. You, you got to look at that. Okay. Amen, Jen. Amen. Look at that story. The Psalms of Ascent. We have all the surface meanings of it, but ultimately it was for our time, our time, starting with stupid COVID-19 in 2020, which literally did shut down the world. Amen, Brother Steve. Amen, you guys, amen. All Listen, all glory to God. Uh, listen, I, I did stop stressing a little bit today. I just said, uh, Lord, I, I can't work myself into a stress fren frenzy because then I don't even enjoy none of this. So I just calmed down. I didn't even go back over my notes. I just did the study, let it go, and then that was it. So <sighs> praise God for that. It's amazing. Yes, moderators, thank you. I, I, I don't even know how bad it was. To me, it all looked good, but you guys are awesome. Thank you for that. Praise God. I mean, Somebody somebody tell me what was going on. Was it bad stuff or just the typical false prophet stuff? <laughs> Wasn't too bad. Okay, praise God. Amen, amen. It's a good fellowship. But man, that makes all the sense of the world, these Psalms. And listen, I don't even know how more emphatically I can say it. Amen. But I'm telling you, I believe a thousand percent that God started counting the fig tree from 1949. 1948's already ruled out. You get that. It's ruled out. You can't even squeeze 81 out of 1948. S Psalm 50, 1950, there's nothing there that says God would have started it in 1950, nothing. Everything happened to them in 49. Won the war, formed a government, formed a military, got voted on to be in the United Nations, got confirmed by the United States of America. 1949 is the year. That's why we got to be raptured now at the appointed time in the time of life, which is either going to be the sixth day of creation or the first day of creation. And listen, I'm convinced of this too. Are you telling me Abraham lived, by the way, 
to be 175 years old. There's another 75. He had Isaac at 75 and lived 75 more years. I mean, this is all amazing. So listen to this. Abraham lived for 75 more years. You don't think he told the story about the day Isaac was born? You know he did. You know he did. So I think people knew, people knew what the time of life was, what day the time of life was, the appointed time at the time of life. So was it the sixth day when he breathed into Adam? Was it the first day of creation? We'll find out soon enough. Praise God. Add the numbers 1949 plus 23, 59, 69, 72. Or you mean 2023? Yes. 51, 74. Is that what you're trying to get at? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, in 1949, 1023, I'm with you, I'm with you, praise God, I didn't even see that, good catch right there, love it, and God does stuff like that, look at that, man, that makes sense, and again, Rock Island Books with his Jubilee on 2023, that's the best time to get raptured on a Jubilee, How can you be confident you're going to be raptured? Easy. Trust everything you have to Jesus, your Lord and Savior, period. You don't bring nothing to the table. You're sin Listen, when you sin every day, it doesn't discount you. Your sin is washed in the blood. So when you believe Christ, think about this. When you believe in Christ, God the Father looks at you. What's up, sister? God the Father looks at you and sees Jesus. He sees Christ. We're clothed in his righteousness. So again, everybody worries about their sin. I worry about it. But sin is not what would keep us from being saved. Belief in Christ is what gets us saved. Listen, one of my new favorite verses, I mean, Revelation 1, 5, and 6, these verses are monumental, huge. Amen. Believe what he did on the cross, the whole thing. Amen. Love it, Daniel. Love it. Praise God. Look at this. Revelation 1, 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. So you got to remember, we're not really faithful, right? We, we mess up. He's faithful. And the first begotten of the dead. He's the first begotten. Remember, we did that study. We'll be begotten just like him, but he's the first. And the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. To him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He loved us. He washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I mean, come on. That should be on all our walls, just plastered. Can it get any better than that? To him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Think about that. Jesus tells us how much the Father loves us. This is telling us how much Jesus loves us, right? 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved us. Jesus loved us and washed us in his own blood. All we have to do is believe that he did that. So, listen, the gospel, if you think about it, is the simplest thing ever. What does God say to you? Believe. That's it. Believe. Brother, I don't think anybody, listen, Pastor Sandy or Dr. Barry, one or the other, said something about the Psalms matching up with the years because it all started with J.R. Church's book back then that he wrote. But I, I ne nobody else dug into it. I was fascinated by this and I will boast in the Lord. He gave me the fervor to look at this. I said, if this is really true, then let's start looking up stuff. Uh, 2020, 120, 2021, uh, 121, Psalm 49, 1949. This fascinated me, fascinated me. I mean, we still haven't exhausted it, not by any means. I looked up World War I, I did Psalm 14, Psalm 17, 1914, 1917. The bush with the shoe was hilarious, right? Psalm 117 was gold. And listen, the, the Hallel Psalms are Psalm 113 to 118. The Great Hallel, the Psalms of Ascent, are 120 to 134. What's smack dab in the middle? The longest chapter of the Bible, Psalm 119. It's all about the word of God. So God sandwiched 119 right before the Psalms of Ascent because in the tribulation, it's this book that will save people. This book is what they're going to need. It's gonna be their oil, their light. Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet, a light unto thy path. Listen, the other thing about the parable of the virgins, uh, somebody in here, he might be in here now, asked me an excellent question. So look, by the way, you guys have been asking some great questions and making great comments. I love it. He said, how did the foolish virgins know that they were not saved? I said, because the cry came at midnight and they were in the dark and they didn't have any light, so they couldn't see. So if you look carefully at that story, they didn't have any light. They didn't, their lamp had no oil. It was empty. They're in the pitch dark. Now, hold on. I just got my other thought. Okay, so Amos 8, God said, at noontime, I'll make the world dark. Everybody loves the three days of darkness. This could be the three days of darkness. So if the sun goes down at noon, M Matthew 24 says, the sun goes dark, the moon goes dark, the stars go dark. So if that's three days of darkness, everything goes dark for three days. And in the midst of that, God's gonna put the Revelation 12 sign up there. And every it says, you'll see the sign of the son of man and then he'll come. So that doesn't mean instant, instant, instant. So it could be three days of darkness or if God, listen to this, if God darkens everything at noon and the parable of the 10 virgins says, behold, the cry came at midnight, it could be 12 hours of darkness, right? Three hours of darkness from noon to three on the cross. For the second coming, this could be 12 hours of darkness if it's not three days. So for 12 hours from noon till midnight, it's pitch dark and nobody sees anything on earth. Listen, God shuts all the lights off. There's no electricity. There's nothing. The lights are off. So praise God. That was just a thought that I had today. Like, man, because noon, midnight, noon, midnight. I mean, God puts those times in there for a reason. Amen. Listen, this is really it. So look, this has to be it because of 1949. 
So when Jesus said, behold the fig tree, that means something. This generation will not pass away till all these be fulfilled. That's a huge line. It's a huge statement. Amen, sister. Could be, listen, it, it, it's more lean towards the second coming. Could there be a darkness before the rapture? Could be, could be. Yeah, Pastor Sandy definitely mentioned the Psalms. I know that. And, and then I think Dr. Barry might have got it from Pastor Sandy or the book. I mean, look, the book's been around since the 80s. So, and look, that book never caught traction in the lukewarm church. Think about that. Why didn't that book of the mystery of the Psalms catch any real traction? The lukewarm church didn't even do anything with it. Thank God, God brought it back into play in our in our last days. Well, September 19th, I know all about that. Listen, I truly believe we're going to be out of here before that just because the summer basket of fruit, the end of a lul, now is a fact, doubting your salvation is a sin, no, nah, I wouldn't say that, Charlie. It depends how hardcore you doubt it. But remember the one guy who said to Jesus, he said, he goes, do you believe? He said, yes, Lord, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. So we can believe and kind of not believe at the same time. Now, ultimately, you got to know that you're saved. But uh, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Lost it, gone, mush. Oh, we got to go before because Elul 25 is the summer fruit harvest. Dates, figs, grapes, pomegranates. You know, the harvest is over. The summer is past. We are not saved. So that end of summer fruit harvest, which is Micah 7, 2, which is right there. Micah 7, 1 and 2 is the rapture. It's the rapture. And he's talking about summer fruit. So that's our clue there. The Shunammite woman, 2 Kings 4, 8, and all that is the boy went out to the harvest. He was out with the reapers doing the harvest. So, man, God gave us clues. God gave us clues to put this together. I mean, all glory to God. God, God has done amazing things for us. He really has. Yeah, I seen that he posted the video. I didn't watch it yet, but look, he, I like hourly watch. I think his name's Pat. Love him. Great guy. Went through horribleness, losing his wife. But he thinks this is the real revelation sign. I do not. I, I do not. Please explain a little more how we are still in Psalms 122. It's not that we're still in it, sister. It is still the rapture, but it's a Psalm that looked forward. So if you think about it, God gave the warning that the rapture is coming, just like he did in Psalm 121. Now, you, you, nobody can deny Psalm 121. He said, the sun will not smite you. The moon will not smite you. Well, nobody's being smited by the moon. But Isaiah 30, 26 when God heats up the sun seven times and the moon is hot as the sun, you can actually be scorched at night by the moon. So why did God say that in 2021? Because this is the greatest time in all God's history. The day of the Lord is the most talked about time period in the Bible. Now, people have looked that up. That's a fact. So God is giving us a warning in the beginning of the Psalms of Ascent. And listen, listen, actually, sister, you just triggered my thought there. So listen, remember I said this before, God showed up to Abraham in Genesis 17. He said, at this time, the appointed time next year in the time of life, you will have a son. So when we all thought it was 2022, and rightfully so, because of Psalm 122 and all the rest of it, it's like God gave us a year warning from the 2022. So remember that? Because he gave Abraham a one-year prophecy 
of Isaac being born one year out. So listen, look, I don't think Pastor Sandy's saved because he believes you can lose your salvation. He rails against once saved, always saved. To me, in my opinion, he went off the rails. Whether he's saved or not is up to God. I don't know. My guess is no. But Pastor Sandy did a lot of good teachings on 22. Remember the wheat, the 22, 22. So everything screamed 2022, including Psalm 122. But again, part of the mystery is, look at Psalm 125. We know the mark of the beast isn't coming out in 2025. It comes out at the halfway point. So again, that was a warning. Hey, don't put forth your hand to iniquity. So all Psalm 122 was letting us know that's the rapture. It's coming. We just didn't know it last year till this year. So I hope that made sense. Praise God. Let's go. This is it. This is it, Sister Tina. This is it. It just has to be. And again, the reason why I read, amen, I agree with that. Man, when he went off the rails with the salvation stuff, it, it almost killed me. I couldn't believe it. But listen, the reason why I read Daniel 9 is so we can let that sink in. Daniel figured out timing. He figured out timing. He was 68 years in Babylon, an 83-year-old man. And by God's books, book of Jeremiah, Deuteronomy, he figured out the timing. So nobody can tell us we can't figure out the timing by the Bible. Yes, we can. Yeah, and listen, right, Pastor Sandy, the, the way he hears from the Lord, I, I think Pastor Sandy, one of his biggest mistakes is all the thoughts in his head, he thinks are from the Lord. Now, the Lord does put thoughts in our head, no doubt, but you got to decipher what your own thoughts are and what's coming from the Lord. So, yeah, I, I had to stop watching him too. I mean, listen, he railed. He railed against once saved, always saved. He he said it was a trick of the Masons, a trick of the devil. He said John MacArthur is a Mason and, you know, works. He He's paid by the Masons to deceive people. So he said a lot of kooky stuff. And, and look, I like the guy. He, he taught me a lot. I learned a lot from him when he was going through it, but... Man, he got real arrogant. His church over there worships him. They worship Sandy, if you notice that. His church, I mean, he can do no wrong in their eyes. 55, mount up, let's go. Yes, I love Johnny Mac too. MacArthur's solid. He's not perfect, but he's certainly solid. Yeah, did Sandy go off on Dr. Barry? Because Dr. Barry always loved Sandy, and he, he would mention him, right? The Sandman, the Sandman, the Sandman. And then I, I guess they did disagree, which technically in that argument, I think Sandy was right because Dr. Barry still believes that Jesus ascended on Shavuot, so... You know, and the, the Phantom Feast of Wine is, I, I don't know why he's stuck on that, but he really is. <laughs> Pastor Sandy Armstrong, he, he's got a YouTube channel, Soldiers for Christ. You could find him that way. And, um, you know, he, he's a pastor of the church on YouTube, teaches. I mean, he's tracking the rapture like the rest of us. Didn't you say Noah was pre-rapture? Pre-rapture? No, I don't think I said that. AI fit into all this? That's a good question, but it will. Actually, I, I think AI is going to be the image of the beast. Because when you read Revelation 13, it says the image has power to kill people if they won't worship the image. 
So somehow they're going to make some AI robot that looks just like the Antichrist, whoever it ends up being, and it's going to have power. I mean, and it's going to be able to travel the world. So, or listen to this. If AI is the image of the beast, they could make thousands of them. Now it goes out through the world, making people take the mark. So even think about that. That that would be, that actually sounds about right. So it could be more than one. And if you really pay attention to Revelation 13, it says the false prophet tells the Jews to make the image of the beast. I don't think anybody knows that. That was a revelation to me because it's a reference to the earth dwellers and there to make the image of the beast. And think about it, Israel always has the best technology. They got Nobel Prize winners. They're making water out of air. They're turning the salt sea into fresh water. Israel has been blessed with technology. Let me see if I can find that. I mean, look, there's a lot of stuff that I wish I could get to, but I'm being honest with you. Part of me just wants to be raptured right now so we all know it. <laughs> right there, Revelation 13, 14. And deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Talking about the false prophet. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. See, we'll, we'll interpret that and say, oh, that's just the people that dwell on the earth. That's not what it means. Remember, most of the earth is decimated. This is right at the midway point when Israel's the number one superpower. And Israel, if you know this, God calls them earth dwellers. That's his name for them, earth dwellers. So it says, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. I'm telling you, the two-thirds Jews that will worship the Antichrist as God, they will come up with that technology and make the image of the beast. So, bam, I actually think that's revelation right there. Praise God. Amen, amen. Rise up. Let's go. We're going, man. This is it. It's hard for any of us to believe we can't really believe it. Of course we do, but it's just, uh, it's such a fascinating thing. Amen. You won't, you'll be going to the mountains of heavenly Jerusalem. Yeah, good point, sister. Whoever controls the AI controls the world. I mean, look at all the stuff AI is doing right now. You know, rewriting the Bible, teaching things, uh, doing homework for kids, whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't think King Charles is the Antichrist. I know he's getting a lot of traction for that. But I think, I think it'll be like Jared Kushner, honestly. I don't think it's going to be an old fossil. I think it's going to be a young person and then... When the spirit of Judas Iscariot comes back. Listen, I got another theory that I couldn't even pray out yet and think. Listen, did I tell you guys this yet? I think Judas may be the false prophet. And then Satan has another seed for the Antichrist. So remember, they're, they're the only ones called the son of perdition. So that's why I thought they were one and the same, but they both could be the son of perdition. And the reason is because the beast that comes out of the abyss in Revelation 9, he's the one that kills Moses and Elijah. And I got a feeling that Judas is going to be the false prophet because he was like a wolf in sheep's clothing. So again, 
Revelation 13. Amen, Brother Nick. I mean, it could be. And listen, he, he wrote the original Abraham Accord. So Revelation 6.1 says he had the covenant in his hand. Look at this, Revelation 13.11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. That's the abyss. And, and being a Jew, the Jews are the earth dwellers. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. So he's the seed of the dragon, but he spoke like a lamb. Remember, Judas pretended to be a disciple. Man, if that revelation's true, praise God. Judas could be false prophet, not the Antichrist, because of those two clues. And, and that would mean Judas is telling the two-thirds of the Jews to make the image of the beast. Man, that, that seems right. I don't know. Amen. It's just fun talk. Nobody's focusing on the AC. <laughs> These are the mysteries of God. Let's fix our heart on heaven now. Let's go. That's actually a good question, but no, I don't think we're seeing the third burn up. It's just a, it's a type of being burned up. But that is interesting because look at the fires. Look, look what's going on. But it, listen, it ultimately can't be because that's Revelation 8. So we are not in Revelation 8. We'd be almost to the middle of the tribulation. So it, ultimately it can't be. Amen, sister. Hang in there, sister. We're almost there. God's going to get us all to the finish line, Willie Bird and Eddie are the two witnesses. Amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, Islam, Islam's gonna kinda go by the wayside, ultimately. The Psalm 83 war will wipe a lot of that out. When Iran gets beat in Ezekiel 38, you know, God's gonna decimate the world. Listen, Antichrist isn't gonna put up with any other religions, this is going to come down to a line in the sand. It's going to be God or Satan. That's ultimately what it's going to be. So, you know, other religions won't even be tolerated. They might be at first, but it's going to quickly turn to, I'm God, worship me. Yeah, Revelation 8, it's, it's like the second or third trumpet, something like that. Who can supernaturally go young? Antichrist? That's interesting. All right, guys, I probably better end this. I know it's fun hanging out and talking, but I don't want it to go too long. It probably discourages people from watching it <laughs> once they see a monster video. Over three hours. How many people in heaven? Not a lot. It, it'll be less than you think. I don't know. That's a good question. How will the witnesses come down? That, 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 that's a good question. And I have thought about that. I mean, God's got to put them in place somehow. Even the 144,000 coming down. Amen. Hero Sea Mountain. <laughs> Praise God. Is that Dale? 
Brother Dale, what's up, my man? You made it on here. Praise God. Look at that Dale Nicholas right there. Dale Nicholas Jr. just recently got saved. Praise the Lord. Amen, you guys. Amen. Okay, yeah. Uh, everybody that goes over to Clapper, I'll I'll plug you in and get you going on that thread. I, I think the hundred forty four thousand are up in heaven. You got to look at Jeremiah sixteen thirty one. When you put the two stories of Herod killing the children and the prophecy of it, I I truly believe that is uh, the hundred forty four thousand. Because remember. In Revelation 14, it says they were the first fruits. So who's the ones that Christ took up at his resurrection? I think it was the 144,000, the first fruits, the ones that came out of their grave and walked through the city. Nobody knew who they were. I I'm telling you, I, I believe that 99.9%. .9 but it's, it's there if you look at it's Jeremiah 31, 15 through 17. Amen, you guys. Amen. All right, let's close it out with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I am so thankful right now, Lord. That came out pretty good. I got all of the notes out, Lord. <laughs> Glory to your name, Father. Thank you for helping me get it all out. I know it ran long, but we praise you. It was worth it. Your word is everything. Your word is so worth it. Absolutely love this book. Thank you, Father. We lift up all the unsaved people in our life, family members, parents, children, cousins, friends, people we've witnessed to, Lord, we're gonna pray for them right up until we're raptured. Please bring them in before the rapture. If not, save them in the tribulation. This is all we care about, Lord. We wanna be with you. We want them to be with you. It's simple. So thank you for all your blessings. All the ones that are hurting in here, going through cancer and you know medical health issues, job issues, money issues, all the ones that are going through that right now, Lord, I lift them up. Please do miracles in their lives. We know that you will. We know that you'll get us to this finish line. This is so gloriously exciting that now is the time. It is finally here. We've been waiting 2,000 years as a church, and we are alive at the end. Lord, we cannot praise you or thank you enough Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for everything you've done. Jesus, we love you and thank you for what you did for us, making this possible, perfectly fulfilling the will of your Father. It is incredible. Holy Spirit, thank you. We love you, sealing us, leading us into all these amazing truths. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we know you are one God in three persons. It's incredible. We'll understand it more when we're one with you from John 17, like you said. We love you, Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, and I do pray for everyone in here, Lord. Please bless them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All glory to the Father. All right, troops. Listen, I'm going to just try to put that other judgment study together. I mean, still kind of wanted to do the virgins, even though we got it out there. And uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever the Lord leads us to. I mean, things will happen in the world for sure you know, bad things, but exciting to us. So we'll just have to see how it shakes out. So God bless you guys. I love all of you. Thanks for hanging out, encouraging me and praying for me. I'm telling you, I mean it. I mean it when you guys pray for me. I feel it. I need it. I'm thankful for it. And the comments on my videos that you guys are putting are just blowing me away. They are like 99% positive. So 
all glory to God for that. I mean, TikTok was probably 70% negative. It was a big shift over there. You guys have lifted my spirit big time, and I'm thankful for that. So praise God. I love all of you. I will see you on the next one.